Welcome to Roundhouse Roulette, a Walker, Texas Ranger podcast. Each week we recap and review one of the 200 existing Walker, Texas Ranger episodes, randomly selected by Roundhouse Roulette. I'm Evan Dalton, here with my brother Adam. What up? And a man who keeps his denim shirt on in the sweat lodge, Mr. Bob Leahy. <laughs> Wait, it's kind of warm in here, isn't it? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Well, we'd like to thank you all for joining us as we revisit Chuck Norris's 1990s denim-clad masterpiece. <laughs> Today, we'll recap and review Season 2, Episode 11, an early one, entitled The Legend of Running Bear, where Walker must use every tool in his arsenal to assist his cousin, who's lost in the woods. <laughs> but before we put on our Texas tuxedos, hop on our horses, and race through the brush... Join us as we pull up a stool at CD's Bar and Grill. Hey guys, what's going on? I'm thirsty, dude. I'm totally thirsty. Well, you are in luck because you are about to slake your thirst on a real beast here. This week, CD's is serving (laughs) up Dad's Oatmeal Stout from O'Fallon Brewery in Maryland Heights, Missouri. Is that Missouri, I believe? Missouri. Yeah. And this one uh, was uh, brought to the cast from Dale Matt Miller. We want to give him a shout out and thank him for hipping us to this Southern Illinois brew. So, thought it was in Missouri. Yeah, come on, Adam. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's it's close. It's close. All right, right. (laughs) Missouri by way of Southern Illinois. Exactly. Yeah, (laughs) it's kind of like how everyone in New England is a Patriots fan. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone in Southern Illinois is a St. Louis sports fan, right? Exactly, yeah. They uh, break state boundaries with their allegiance to sports teams, which is pretty admirable. <laughs> it's proximity, not boundary. Right, right, right. Well, apparently this brew is based off of another local staple, which is a oatmeal cookie by Dad's Scotch Oatmeal Cookies in St. Louis. And apparently the brewers have taken the key ingredients of Dad's Scotch Oatmeal Cookies and incorporated them into an oatmeal cream stout. That's a beer. <laughs> this stout is velvety smooth with a creamy mouthfeel. Hints of chocolate, cinnamon, caramel, oat, raisin, and vanilla combined to create this liquid cookie. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let's crack the top off this thing, huh? Oh, yeah. This is not in a can. Right. I'm going to send this one, ready? I'm going to send it. Oh, oh that's no. that's legit. I, I think you just might. broke a window. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've never bing, 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 even bing, bing, tried to do the lighter thing because I just know I'm going to mess it up. Well, it's pretty much all I learned in college. So mm. It's it's mm. all or nothing. Either you look cool or you look really lame not making it work. Yeah, yeah. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> just want to point out that the bottle cap says, we love beer on it. So they're doing what they love. Cheers. It's pretty chill. There is something like the raisiny, like, cinnamon thing going on there that's good but it's subtle it's subtle at the end it's good i really dig it how many alcohols does this have in it (laughs) that's all i'm making sure i'm no i'm just making sure i set myself up for the rest of the day i got got some work to do later (laughs) (laughs) yeah it kind of tastes like um carbonated milk after the bowl of raisin bran or raisin bran crunch because it's got that little extra sweetness Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, de- you definitely get the raisin in there, oatmeal, and it's subtle. It's not over the top, and uh, it's pretty chill. I dig it. Yeah, it's uh, better than it sounds. It's very, the carbonation <laughs> is interesting in this one. Yeah, a little bit more than I would expect. Yeah, almost like the carbonation from a soda. Mm-hmm. Mm. So we'll be burping more than usual. Mm. Right, those are all edited <laughs> out, I'm sure. <laughs> Well, I, ours are. Yours are always in. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a burp remover plug-in we use. It's pretty I intense. heard about some guys who, uh, throughout their time in quarantine, got together. And I guess instead of creating a Walker Texas Ranger podcast, they just each recorded their farts every day. And then mm. created an online library of fart noises, which they're selling access to. Is it $2 a month? Yeah, is it subscription based? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Equally useful use of their time, right? Yeah. 
I mean, Walker, Texas Ranger is almost universal, but farts are universal. So it's yeah. true. It's true. Our friend uh, Nate, who's a recording engineer, one of the producers he worked with back in the day, they'd have a DAT machine in the studio with a microphone plugged directly into it in the control room, and anytime anyone had to fart, they'd just record it to DAT. So they'd just have a whole cassette of fart sounds. Are they from famous people? Maybe. I, I don't know. If you listen hard enough, you might be able to tell if it was like somebody, you know, probably by the reaction. Like you hear the fart and then it's like, I know some of your whole Motown records. <laughs> is, would like Shazam pick up the fart? N- know who it is? <laughs> it could be. We could get some AI on that. Yeah. yeah. Can you guys guess who my fart was? Rod Stewart. Well, yeah. See, yeah. see, that's how you would tell if you listen to that dad tape. All right, all right, Evan. What do you got? Rock sap. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like you got to do a Brian Adams cut, Bob. Well. Mine was totally fictitious because, as we all know, Sting doesn't fart. He also doesn't poop. No. Mm. He's, mm. His rear end is sealed. He's trans- yeah, he's transcendent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everything I do, <laughs> do it for, for poop. you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. There's the trifecta right there. <laughs> We've done it. So, those of you who... Uh, Want access to that? You just got it for free. So there you go. <laughs> Celebrity fart tapes. <laughs> uh, wow. Okay. We've come out firing on all cylinders. Yeah. Uh, th- literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're firing on one cylinder, really. But hey, who's counting? <laughs> yeah. Well, as you guys know, for me, it was kind of a shitty week. We lost our longtime pal and cat, Gimpy, and uh, we had to put him down this week. He had had diabetes for a while, but got over it for a bit, and then they kind of came back the last month, and we were thought he was getting better, but then he was, like, unable to eat. He'd want to eat, but he'd, like, try to paw it into his mouth with one paw in this weird way. We took him in, and it turned out he had, like, a tumor down his throat. So mm. it was like he can't even eat. And uh, since he had diabetes, I couldn't do any treatment or anything. So we had to put him down on Tuesday, and that was tough. Um, But uh, Gimp's been a part of Roundhouse Roulette since inception. Really? He really has, yeah. He uh, was actually a part of the secret origin of Roundhouse Roulette, was he not? I'd say he was like one of the architects. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Inspiration and, you know. I would say as far as cats go, Gimpy probably watched more episodes of Walker, Texas Ranger than most other cats out there. <laughs> it's also, yeah, it's, I'm sure that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'd say so. Um, we took him home after we got the diagnosis and we're like, well, we're going to give him his, like the best normal night we can. So we played annoying records for him. Um, you, you gotta, I mean, if I... If my last night, I was like, I'm going to listen to Kind of Blue. So we, we, we jammed on that, did all that stuff. And then he usually would watch TV with us on the couch and stuff. So we uh, were like, what would we usually do? And we're like, well, I guess we'd watch Walker. Mm. So we watched this episode with him. He was in his basket full of blankets, which is where he usually liked to hang out. And then once we started watching something, he'd come over to the couch and hang with us and usually sit on Sarah's legs. He came over, and we watched this episode, and I mean, it's going to be hard for me to gauge episodes, because usually, if he fell asleep, you know, it was easy for me to know if the episode was good or not, but but I will say, in this episode, every time there was an eagle cry, he definitely perked up. Yeah. (laughs) Nice. Nice. (laughs) Which I'm sure we'll get into later. (laughs) That's a good Um, one. Yeah. So he was more than one of the architects. He's also an ongoing consultant of the podcast. Most definitely. 
Yeah. yeah. And I've got some pictures here. For those who haven't heard our Secret Origin of Roundhouse Roulette podcast, we kind of started this with a spinning episode wheel selector. It was a roulette wheel. Yeah, of 12 episodes that we selected, and you could spin it. We got together and had a, a walker weekend. Once COVID-19 hit, it formed into this podcast, but uh, <laughs> I've got some pictures of GIMP from around that time. Once we spun an episode on the wheel, the way we denoted that the episode was already watched was a cutout of CD's head. <laughs> <laughs> Bob and I literally went to Staples and got sheets of CD's head printed out and then had to cut them all out. And Gimpy was such a patient cat that he was so chill (laughs) that he literally let us put multiple versions of paper CD's heads all on top of them. (laughs) So we'll definitely pop that up on the socials for you guys to check out. I will say that that photo was uh, texted to me prior to my arrival and I had no idea what was going on. Oh, right. Yeah, that was, that was <laughs> like, let's just send this to Evan and not tell him anything else. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> no context cat with a bunch of CDs on him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we even got a pick of him with the uh, Western Pistol and the legendary Fidget Spinner, which was the linchpin of our selector wheel. He put his paw out and was fidget spinning. <laughs> it was pretty yeah. awesome. <laughs> But yeah, so we're going to miss Gimp, and uh, we just wanted to give him a shout out this episode. But I've even got some pictures of a gift from Evan's cat, Delilah. That's right. Yeah, Delilah actually sent Gimpy a a Christmas gift a while back. It was really nice. A grumpy cat party mix. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Some Frisky's party mix that was branded with grumpy cat. Uh, (laughs) For those of you who've already forgotten, grumpy cat was a meme cat. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that had, uh, you know, maybe a year and a half of fame, which I would say probably peaked with having a Frisky's Party mix named after him. Yeah, but uh, Gimpy and, was uh, savoring those treats here, I see. Look, looks like it was good. Were they like cheddar flavor or something? Oh, they're mm-hmm. original. <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully it had some cheese. But yeah, Gimpy also had a bow tie in this picture, which is pretty svelte. Gimpy <laughs> did rock the bow tie. We have a photo of Gimpy on our bridge. <laughs> so that Delilah remembers her cousin, and the photo's got a, a bow tie on, so <laughs> like a plaid one, very classy. There's a ton of stories we have that Gimby's been through. He actually was a trailer park cat who had his back legs broken. He came with the name Gimpy, so that name itself got him into a few scenarios. But we lived in an apartment in downtown Nashville. That you could look out and see like the downtown skyline. It was an old brick house. That I think it used to be a dance studio, but the owner turned it into like some loft apartments, and it was kind of funky. He's an artist, really cool guy, Jim DeVault. Uh, he does some very unique like wood structures, and he's been featured on the local Tennessee arts programs and stuff. But he built that all into the house as well, so really funky place. But Gimpy, he'd hang out at the windows and look out at the birds and... Occasionally, he'd get outside and get up on the roof, that kind of thing. But usually, we tried to keep him inside because he was mainly an indoor cat. That being said, one of the other neighbors had a black cat whose name was Special Agent Jack Bauer. (laughs) And every once in a while, we'd see, like, black paws come from the hallway into our apartment under the door. And so so he and Gimpy would go back and forth between. It was pretty classic. But uh, Jack Bauer's owner was like, hey, you can do whatever you want. Like, literally, this cat is climbing over the roof of, like, a two-story building in downtown and had free reign at the whole place. And poor Gimpy was locked, <laughs> locked away with us. <laughs> can describe the picture? Uh, you've got Gimpy looking out a window out across the roof and right at the sort of peak of the roof way back, maybe, like, 40 feet away, is this tiny black cat staring directly at Gimpy. (laughs) Taunting Gimpy, Agent Jack Bauer. (laughs) And then the next shot is Jack Bauer literally up against the window and Gimpy looking at him like, don't even come in here. (laughs) (laughs) Don't even think about it. Keep your distance. But the crazy story with that was Sometimes we'd leave that window open so Gimpy could get some of the fresh air. He liked to hang out there with the screen open, too. And we must have gone somewhere. 
and we came back and the screen was busted out and both Jack Bauer and Gimpy were hanging out together, just chilling right by that window on the roof. So they buried the hatchet eventually. They, they did. I think it was like a solidarity thing. Jack Bauer's like, I'm going to get you out of here. <laughs> Bust you out. <laughs> yeah. Pretty classic. So we don't know how old he was exactly, but he's been with us over 10 years. And as you can see from this last shot, he's been living the retired life up until now. Seems like a pretty happy cat. Yeah. Enjoying the golden years. Yeah. He definitely soaked in a lot of Walker in his golden years. <laughs> So that's the demographic for walkers, people in their golden years. <laughs> well, I don't know how we fit into that, but... Uh, Uh-oh. Oh, boy. <laughs> Starting yeah. early. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe we are in our golden years. <laughs> <That's gonna be laughs> it. <laughs> hey, at least uh, they're not behind us, right? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but uh, Evan and I never had pets growing up. Kimpy was my first real pet, and it was really hard this week to be without him. We're like, it would be nice to dig him a grave on the property if we can. And we found a spot, and Sarah and I are in the front yard, and a car pulled into our driveway, and a girl got out. And I'm like, is this like a neighbor who's going to be like, why are you digging a big hole in your in your front yard? You've been working on it for a few days, you know, that kind of thing. And she got out with a pizza. For those of you who have listened to our podcast where we talk about Wishbone, um, and uh, how I stole a technique from Wishbone to make up to a friend by delivering a pizza. Well, that friend that I did that to, Kevin Wallach, he reverse Wishboned us. <laughs> he, he sent us a condolence pizza for the Gimster, but mm. big shout out to him. But that was really thoughtful for him to do that. But uh, we've got Gimp here, and he's got some really nice flowers and and he's going to be hanging out with a lot of birds and probably getting a few of them i would think so that's the way to do it just wanted to make sure we gave a shout out to our fourth member of the podcast gimpy we're going to miss you buddy Hmm. chief architect and senior consultant Mm -hmm. cheers to the gimp salute ev you want to take this next one uh yeah we would love to shout out our new patron lil mo Sizzlack. <laughs> a uh, Simpsons reference. And, uh, you know, we'd just love to give them a uh, little bit of a shout out here on the pod. Yep. They became one of our patrons at the Ranger level. And we currently have two levels. We're trying to keep it simple. Um, the Ranger level is $5 a month. And you become a member of Texas's most elite law enforcement team. And not only can you ace a bullseye while doing kung fu. But you can also communicate with animals, deliver mm-hmm. babies, and intimidate time into slow motion. So all for five bucks a month. You're probably a damn good substitute teacher, too. Yeah. Yeah. And as a bonus, you're going to get exclusive content from us on Patreon, a shout out on the podcast here, and a Roundhouse Roulette sticker. So thank you, Lil Mo, for helping us make this podcast happen. Um, we also have another level, which is at a lower rate uh, it's criminal mastermind for one dollar a month have the peace of mind of knowing that without bad guys like you roundhouse roulette would not exist and for those of you who are interested in how much that would cost over the year oh you're gonna do the math huh yeah that would be twelve dollars a year <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a bargain to me for our current patron members we're going to be adding to our chuck norris walker texas ranger library and we're going to be making available the rare 1976 issue of the deadly hands of kung fu which has an interview with chuck norris and some awesome illustrations of chuck norris a picture of chuck norris with stan lee a picture of chuck norris with comics icon jack kirby and then a feature on the International Karate League, which he was spearheading at the time. And there are some pictures of him recreating some of his famous fights. But most notably, there's a picture of him breaking concrete blocks on this guy's stomach while a 1970s Geraldo Rivera looks on. You can't make this up, folks. It's real. I'm looking at it. <laughs> 
So this is going to be available for our patrons, and we've got a lot more ridiculous stuff coming. So we'd like to thank everyone who bought a Round Us Roulette t-shirt throughout the month of March to help us support the Texas recovery efforts after the deep freeze there and Mm -hmm. the power outages. Uh, and all the freezing damages with the plumbing and all that. It looked pretty awful. We're recording this podcast in the last week of March, so we'll give you a donation update once we have the final numbers. But a quick shout out to our friends Gilbert and Francisco of Fort Worth's Talented Slackers podcast, who both pitched in for the cause. They are currently working their way chronologically through season three of Walker, Texas Rangers. So if you want an uncensored take on the show from three actual Texans, give them a listen. They also listen to the show in real time, too. So it's like watching it with with some people who have a bit more background info than we do, for sure. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) They're awesome. Our boy Gilbert at the Talented Slackers, he said, shout out to Adam and the boys at Roundhouse Pod. Swag came in. And now I'm ready for anything. I've been empowered with my own Chuck Norris shoulder angel. I can do no wrong. (laughs) I had to throw in the Chuck Norris action figure we had. I figured if anyone needed a Chuck Norris action figure, it was those guys. Yeah, they would definitely appreciate it more than most. (laughs) His shoulder angel asterisk ass kicker. Yeah. (laughs) In the podcast I was listening to about the Snyder Cut, he was like literally playing with it. You could hear it. (laughs) <laughs> you know the sounds well yeah he does it does like this weird back kick it's very strange yeah i guess he was hanging out with wally the depressing pixar robot <laughs> so hopefully bringing a bit more positive energy to the party than wally was <laughs> yeah all right well, we got a lot to cover here for those of you at home who don't want any spoilers hit that pause button Give a watch to Season 2, Episode 11, The Legend of Running Bear, and then come on back to us. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's dig in. This episode originally aired on January 8th, 1994, so, you know, kind of New Year's episode here. Mm. And it uh, opens up on Walker uh, saddling up his trusty Pinto horse. Is he on a Native American reservation? We are not sure. Uh, but he is surrounded by people who have been enlisted to at least portray (laughs) Native Americans on horses. Okay. And we know that they are because all those people are shirtless and on horseback. And Walker is anything but shirtless. Bob, do you want to describe Walker's getup here? Uh, I think he's got the full denim, right? Yeah, it's it's one word. Just denim? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Denim and a hat. Mm. (laughs) True, true. Yeah. I think if there's one person to display the durability and breathability of denim, (laughs) it would be Chuck Norris. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He he looks damn fine on it. And Uncle Ray's there, too. And I guess they're going to have, like, some sort of race. And you're like, oh, no. (laughs) Walker's going to beat these guys. Yeah. I actually was like... (laughs) Is he going to win? You know, then I was like, why did I even ask myself that question? Of course he's going to win. Yeah. So, yeah, Ray's like, Ray's like, oh, I wish you luck on this race. And Walker's like, man, did I really have to come out to this? This doesn't really suit my style. And Ray's like, those spirits say you have the spirit of a warrior. And Walker's kind of like, you know, yeah. wise cracking the spirits a bit. You know, this yeah. is part of his character arc. Where, He's kind of playing like the, the, the annoying teenager. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Walker. He hasn't quite bought in. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yep. <laughs> He's 50, but... <laughs> <laughs> but playing a 30-year-old. <laughs> so he kind of playfully is like, eh, whatever, you know, Uncle Ray, who is played by Floyd Red Crow Westerman in this episode. Uh, respect. Still the OG, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, this race commences, and as expected, even though he's decked out in full-on denim, uh, he completely trounces everybody else in this horse race (laughs) and um, is like, oh, well, you know, the spirits, you know, are they happy now? And Uncle Ray is all like, you better respect those spirits. Time for you to visit the sweat lodge. Right. Let's hit it. <laughs> and he's like, I thought I was already in a sweat lodge. I was literally in a horse race in full denim. He doesn't break a sweat at all. <laughs> That's probably because this race features some really, really bold shots of 
Chuck Norris' stunt double on a horse. Yeah. Like, <laughs> flagrant. If you just pause Not it, you're close. like, oh, yeah, that's that's a guy dressed as Chuck Norris. And then Chuck was in his air-conditioned trailer, walked out, mm. as it should be. And, uh, yeah, with that little wry comment about the uh, sweat lodge, you know, and Walker's all like, again? Angsty teen. Yeah. Cut to the credits here. This is kind of like a cold open. A little foreshadowing that we're going to get some Native American themes. If the uh, episode title, The Legend of Running Bear, didn't already give you that vibe. I wasn't sure. I thought it might be a better road race. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, we come back from the credits and Walker and Trevette are cruising in uh, Walker's season two vehicle, a GMC gray truck. Mm. Inferior. It becomes pretty clear that uh, Trevette and Walker are going to be doing the sweat lodge together. And this is Trevette's first experience with a sweat lodge. So he's really into it. He's like, where's the sweat lodge, Walker? Where's the sweat lodge? And they roll up at this like field in the middle of nowhere. And there's this tiny hut. And I guess Trevette was like thinking it would look like a spa or something. He's like, this is it? But before that, we actually meet the protagonist slash old friend slash cousin in this episode. And this is David. And David has a girlfriend named Sally, and we learn from the uh, incessant heckling of a uh, rowdy group of Native Americans who live on the reservation. Um, Yeah. And they kind of resent David because David left the reservation to go to school, and he's coming back, I guess, to visit Sally. Is that right? She's still on the reservation? Is that how Mm. it is? Okay. Yep. And so when he comes back, they're all like, you don't have a right to be here because you left city boy yeah it's kind of like walker in walker texas ranger he's part native american and you know chuck norris himself he's a quarter native american just for the record well this rowdy group is fronted up by uh jonathan joss who we've actually seen in a prior episode and we already pointed out the fact that he plays chief ken hotate who's the chief of the fictitious wamapoke tribe in parks and recreation uh oh was that him again yeah. He played a younger Uncle Ray, right? Yeah. He's actually in like a ton of episodes for Walker. He's in like five other episodes, all playing Uncle Ray. But in this, he's actually not playing Uncle Ray because Uncle Ray's actually there. Yep. This is his first show for Walker, Texas Ranger. So they were giving him a test drive in 1994. Okay. okay. And he played Eddie, the loyal reservation bully, basically, <laughs> yeah. who, you know, is like in his 30s, but playing basketball (laughs) 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 and he's like a master of the stink face yeah yeah. he gave the the ugly eye to to david multiple times in this episode it was pretty good yeah i mean if someone's on your ball team and they leave you know you're gonna resent them you know Mm, it's it's like you know i had this guy i used to play music with he was in nashville for a little bit i thought we went way back he played drums and uh, i played guitar and then he left nashville and I still resent that. Right. It must have hurt. It must have been really painful. It hurt so good. It hurt mm. so good. Do you call him a city boy? <laughs> yeah. Or a Yankee, maybe? Yankee. Yeah, yeah, definitely a Yankee. Yeah. yeah. So, now, just, did you guys notice the, uh, the <laughs> hanging around the big oil drums with the fires in them, like city bum style? It only stood out to me because everyone was like wearing short sleeved t shirts. Yet these guys are like standing around warming their hands around these fires for no reason. <laughs> uh, this, it just to make them look a little more fierce. Maybe it's like NBA Jam. They just want to like dunk the basketball in it so the basketball is on fire. It's true. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's heating up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this is when uh, Walker and Trevette show up and we get a formal introduction with David and his girlfriend, Sally, and we learn that David is actually Walker's cousin. Yeah. So, yeah. hashtag old friend. Yeah, hashtag family. So, yeah, Walker and Trevette, they find the sweat lodge, and Trevette is kind of excited about it until he learns that uh, they kind of go in there with no clothes on. <laughs> and then he's a little weirded out because he's around a bunch of old dudes and his partner. But um, yeah. but Walker, it seems like he's done this before, stripping down with a bunch of dudes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's all yeah. bad for him. Yeah, for sure. There was no hesitation. Just drops trow. Mm-hmm. And uh, Uncle Ray comes out and <laughs> he smudges both of them. And Trevette's kind of like, what is going on? And They get into the lodge and, you know, Walker's kind of giving them the lay of the land. 
Everyone else is sort of silent, but Walker is kind of whispering under his breath, trying to introduce the people in the lodge, including David's grandfather, who's in there as well, who I guess is Walker's great uncle. Was David in the sweat lodge as well? He was not. David had to drive home because he goes to college. He goes to oh, university. Oh, so. oh, yeah. They said, hey, um, are you going to join the sweat lodge tonight? And he's like, oh, no, I've got to go study. So. Absolutely. He was probably kicked drugs out of America, kid, too. Possibly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, David is on his way home, and he's rocking out to some sick jams in his tiny red hatchback. Mm. It's a Chevy mm. Spirit, by the way. I looked oh. that up. <laughs> You know, I will say that car is able to stop on a dime because <laughs> uh, he sees a car pulled over on the side of the road and uh, this old guy stumbles out of the woods and falls down in the road and he slams on the brakes big time. Like yeah. that car stops. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> I had to rewatch the scene because the stunt guy is laying in the road and the car, it almost runs the guy over. Like <laughs> it's oh, no. so close because the, the stunt driver like slams on the brakes and the car is kind of like swiveling back and forth oh, as yeah. it, <laughs> and it, it almost nails the guy. Wow. Uh, it's a, it's a very close call. <laughs> Cause there's a guy like, we don't know if he's dead or not. He's lying in the middle of the road and David's speeding up. He stops, as you say, almost runs him over, <laughs> runs <laughs> over to him. And who is this guy who's lying down there? Charlie Three Feathers, who we learned earlier on from the, the group of hecklers. Charlie Three Feathers is, I believe, the father of David's girlfriend and doesn't really like David. Maybe some bad blood because he left the reservation and Three Feathers, you know, may not approve of his relationship with his daughter. So he finds him there and Three Feathers is like, they're after me. And he hands David this key and he's like, get out of here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He dies in a badly acted way. (laughs) The classic. (gasps) (sighs) And just as he dies, the guns start firing. And these two guys out in the woods are shooting at him, and they're yelling at David Little Eagle because they know who he is. And he just beats feet right out of there. Gets right into that little Chevy. Heads on down the road. Pedal to the metal. <laughs> Just so you know, Charlie Three Feathers acted in three shows. I think you guys can figure out what three shows this actor acted in. All right. Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman. Nope. I oh. think a little further back. Dallas? Yep. Nice. Okay. And then one more after that. Wishpon? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's the quintessential Walker actor. Oh, wow. Dallas Wishbone Walker. Yeah. DWW. Yeah. That's like better than the EGOT. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, these two white guys in like bolo ties with yeah. big guns just sort of run out of the woods, shout out David's name, David Little Eagle. <laughs> yeah. And then they open fire on him. Like if they wanted to draw attention to themselves, they couldn't do it more ridiculously than right. that, I think. Yeah. Why call out his name? Other than for, like, the plot to be like, oh, they knew my name. Which, I don't even know if that even mattered. In the end, it didn't. It could have. It could have. I think it was mentioned that they knew who he was. It was mentioned again, but it it didn't pay off in any way. Uh, No. No. It's implied that those guys killed Three Feathers. One would assume, yeah. Or he could have just had a heart attack. It's true. He was just sort of holding his back. There was no blood or anything. So, we kind of... We're left to draw some conclusions. It could have been a coincidence that two guys with guns were just hanging out there at the same time. True. True. Just yeah. throwing that out there. So So uh Walker and Trevette, they get out of the sweat lodge and you know, of course, Trevette is floored by the experience and has to crawl out because he's so overtaken with exhaustion. But Walker, he just stands up and walks out. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh yeah, so, he was it was no problem for him once it was like this is old hat. Yeah. <laughs> Did he have a vision while he was in there? We don't really hear about it just then, but okay. uh, he kind of starts recounting it to CD later on at the bar. Okay, okay. Um, but CD starts talking about his own sweat lodge experience, which is, um, you know, he starts talking about how he sort of saw some bodacious seductress <laughs> uh, in his vision, and he's just about to uh, describe what she said to him when... 
a hashtag old friend Mabel comes in. Mm. Oh and, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mabel is um, she's in a bunch of episodes, right? To begin with, but you know, I kind of looked up why that may have happened, and it's because this actress Lou Hancock actually passed away in 1994. So oh, that's too bad. Yeah, she yeah. kind of was like CD's girlfriend ish, maybe or love uh, interest. Slam bam, thank you, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, can we get it's into pretty, this here? So she yeah. well first so she walks in and she's about CD's age and prevents him from telling an unsavory uh, sexual story. Um, they they kind of <laughs> look like they could be siblings quite frankly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And actually, from the way she was talking, it sounded like she might work as, like, a clerk at the ranger station, right? Because she was talking about getting information or something. Yeah, at the DA's office or something. Maybe that's where they hooked up, you know. The classic CD experience here. It's very CD. Very CD, like what CD said before this when he said, she'd make a hound dog hug a bear. <laughs> you <laughs> bet. about a pretty mouth or something? It was got weird when he was talking about yeah, his vision. Yeah, her- soft beautiful lips parted and she was about to say this and then mabel came in and (laughs) ruined everything she's very loud kind of brash and kind of takes charge of everything and puts cd in his place and they kind of go at each other's throats a little bit right oh yeah for sure well we learned that she invited cd over for dinner and all he did was eat pot roast and leave he didn't even loosen his tie Mm. Mm-mm. You know, she cooked him some pot roast to try to get a little snuggling, and uh, <laughs> CD doesn't want none of that. She goes, "Yeah, it was just wham, bam, thank you, ma'am," and then you were gone. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think that implies something else. <laughs> yeah, I heard that and kind of assumed something else had happened, but then we got the pot roast story. So I'm yeah. just going with no euphemisms, straight up text and talk, and uh, we're moving on. Yeah, hopefully eating pot roast wasn't a euphemism. Okay, let's okay. move on. Yeah. <laughs> So they kind of snap at each other, and uh, CD sends her out. He says he's got an image to maintain. What kind of image is is he is he trying to? <laughs> an upstanding business owner. He can't be some floozy that's you know just all over town. Yeah, oh, I mean, okay. okay. You know what I mean, yeah. he's got a. I mean, we, this deserves being dug into here, guys. I mean, we need to. We, this is. I know. We're, know we're spending a lot on this moment, but there's a lot here to unpack. As far as the podcast goes, I think CD's image is he's the kind of guy who will um, flip over a car hood when he has to, take a punch when he has to, and uh, he'll pull a shotgun on anyone who comes in and tries to hold him up. Okay, yeah. He's not going to be in love. No way. Yeah, nope. Yeah. No. Nope. He can't be tamed. He can start telling an unsavory story, but he won't finish it. That's the kind of guy he is. Yeah, I think so. It seems right. Well, good for him, and uh, hopefully we'll see some more episodes with Mabel in it, because it was kind of fun to see them argue. I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed it. You guys didn't. Okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Walker actually learns about how David has been absent and uh, been missing for three days. And uh, nobody knows where he is. He and Trevette are like, wait, that's like around the period of time that we saw him. That's the same day that Charlie Three Feathers actually died. So we got to figure out what's going on with, with David here. He might be involved. So they head on over to his apartment. And the apartment has two guys in like a government issue vehicle waiting outside. <laughs> um, and we see them a lot doing this in this yeah. episode yeah yeah i was kind of expecting walker to just kind of walk up to the car because in later episodes he'd noticed that they were there yeah walker pulled out from this place right and the moment he pulled out the guys drove like eight yards and pulled into the parking spot it was like it was not yeah. subtle yeah <laughs> yeah throughout the whole episode they're just like there but spoiler alert walker never does the classic walker trick of like sneaking up on the people doing surveillance early episodes here so yeah this is technically the first season a lot of the tropes haven't settled in Mm -hmm. so they visit his apartment and no one answers the door but the door's unlocked and the place has been ransacked and they're all like oh man what the heck happened here i really hope he's not involved but people are looking for something and uh just then david's girlfriend sally walks in and she acts all surprised to see the place like that but it's pretty clear something's wrong Mm -hmm. she says she has no idea where david is and 
you know, she hasn't seen him since they saw him. And, you know, then she leaves and Walker, his spidey sense is tingling. He's like, she knows something. And right. he, he and Trevette are sort of waiting for her to leave so they can follow her, hopefully to David. Right. But uh, someone comes in and ruins the party when Sally starts walking back to her car. A sweet 80s Ford Astro van rolls up. <laughs> And, of course, the guys get out and kidnap her. Side door rolls open. Yeah. Let's get her. <laughs> and uh, they peel off, and then Walker and Trevetta are in their truck. They see this happen, and they, of course, make a really slow three-point turn to get out of there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they made a point to cut where Walker looks behind him to back out of the driveway he had just pulled into. <laughs> I was yep. like, okay. We're going to show. Okay. That's important. <laughs> yep. Safety first. Also, they show him buckling a seatbelt. Oh, always, yeah. I, I didn't notice that, but I have in other episodes. Maybe I'm just so used to it now. <laughs> but they go after this van, and a little bit of a car chase. Truck goes over some pretty cool jumps. Got like three feet of air that time. <laughs> <laughs> and at the onset of this whole thing, like when the Astro van pulls out and the Walker pulls out after that, they cut to the two creepy guys in their car and they're like, pretty exciting neighborhood to be in today. <laughs> like you're like, okay. I was like, yeah, it is. There's a car chase about to happen. <laughs> yeah. At one point during this car chase, the Astro van does this whip. You know, you turn in the middle of the street, and it just looks so hilarious. The car, like, like ch- that, chunks just... of rubber flying off the oh, tires. Oh, yeah. I'm like, they're really... Oh, man. <laughs> Tearing yeah. it up. Astro Van just looked like a children's toy block with, like, tiny little wheels. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and they're sort of weaving through traffic and all this stuff. I'm like, you know, this is a Ford Astro Van with, like five grown humans in it <laughs> and you've got it's being chased down by a gmc truck that's you know got all the bells and whistles like how are they possibly getting away from this truck i don't understand this and just as i was trying to figure out what was going on they actually hit traffic yeah <laughs> it's just great <laughs> I was like, this is very realistic, but very unlike Walker. <laughs> and they're going yeah. up over a bridge, and, all, and it's just a standstill. And mm. like, oh. Poor planning. You don't do an abduction during rush hour. No, no. you don't. Yeah. That's Bad a rookie, move. rookie mistake. Yeah, yeah. But once they hit that traffic, the guys in the minivan jump out, and they take Sally down this embankment or something. and then Yeah, it's like an overpass kind of thing. Does Walker jump down or something on them or something? It's like, yeah, he jumps on one of the dudes. <laughs> he jumps. One down of the guys from- turns back and takes a shot at Trevette. Just after that, Walker comes down on top of him. They make pretty short work of it, though. There wasn't a lot of labor. No. Yeah. A moderate scuffle at best. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then they kind of rescue Sally, and and this is the linchpin in getting Sally to trust Walker and Trevette to let them know where David is. Yeah. So they find out that David is actually staying in a hotel. They go and visit him with Sally. And Walker gives him the old cousin stare. And David just totally opens up and tells his story and gives Walker this key that he was given by Charlie Three Feathers. And Walker and Trevette are like, oh, it's a safety deposit box key. We'll check out and figure out what this is all about. Yeah. You know, he's all like... David, for some reason, we got to get you back to the reservation to tell the elders what happened. But it's not exactly clear that they're doing that. Right. We're going to bring you back to the place where people tried to kill you. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Makes sense. So cut to David in a teepee with Walker, Uncle Ray, and I guess David's grandfather. Yeah. Who is played by one man and, dare I say, voiced by another? (laughs) <laughs> certainly seemed like it yeah god like the most it's, that's easily one of the most ridiculous overdubs i've ever heard yeah the first time i heard it, i was like did did his lips really move with that and the second time I'm like no they didn't and why did they do this <laughs> like, the guy's like talking to him and telling the story of the legend of running bear this is where we get spoon-fed the title of the episode. Yes. Yep. But the overdub for this guy's voice is like, 
It's like the lowest thing imaginable. <laughs> so we hear the legend of Running Bear, which is basically a story about a child who his mind gets filled with ideas that he was going to become an eagle. And no one believed him until one day he spoke to an eagle and he became an eagle. <laughs> I'm not sure where the bear came in, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, his name was Running Bear, but he became an eagle. Oh, right. Okay. I guess that makes sense. Does it though? <laughs> Wasn't there some parallel to him leaving the reservation and not having a home or something? Yeah, it's supposed to be like the story of how like David, you know, he wanted to learn things he couldn't learn on the reservation, so he left for school or something, I guess. But there was no like good resolution to the story though, right? No, he never came back. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What was the point of the legend? Was there one? I don't think there was. There's an eagle. There's a bald eagle, Adam. That's the point. Yeah, the point is <laughs> the most important character of this episode was introduced, and that would be the bald eagle stock footage <laughs> they used. All right, so how did they introduce that in the legend? Well, okay. he wanted to become an eagle, and so then he talked to an eagle and became an eagle and never came back. Okay. And that, that was okay. Running Bear. So I guess we're led to assume that any other time we see an eagle in this episode, it's Running Bear? Or is it the eagle that helped Running Bear? I think it's the eagle that helped Running Bear. Right, okay. because it ends up helping Walker later. But mm-hmm. we'll get there. I remember hearing the story. I'm like, this is obvious parallel to him leaving the reservation. But it's not really providing any advice, really, for him either. No. As those stories typically do. It was just like kind of like, okay, whatever. <laughs> well, I was impressed that they didn't use hawk sounds for the eagle. Yeah, although I will say that um, I'm not really sure they're bald eagle sounds either. It's, clo- they- it's closer to a bald eagle than a hawk, though. Right? It is, yeah. So bald eagles, everyone likes to think that bald eagles make those, like, the screaming sound. And so, like, in, in movies, they always use a red-tailed hawk's call because that's, like, instantly recognizable as, like, a raptor or something. But bald eagles make this really lame kind of whistling whimper sound, hey. yeah. which... <laughs> it's kind of like the sounds they used in this episode, but not quite right. But they're on the right path. They use some ridiculously awesome stock footage of bald eagles in this. So while David's grandfather's telling the legend of Running Bear, uh, we get a reenactment here. And that's when we see a young boy dressed in moccasins and things running around through the woods <laughs> and uh, looking up into the sky occasionally. And he sees an eagle and the eagle clearly sees him and we know this because we get eagle vision <laughs> which you know nowadays it would be really easy to get this with a drone but i was thinking about it i think to get these shots and they use eagle vision a lot in this episode yeah. mm-hmm. it's yeah. fantastic you think it was a crane shot i think they used a helicopter oh because it's really unstable <laughs> Uh. (laughs) (laughs) yeah anyways uh while they're at the reservation walker's like you heard the voice of these guys even though you didn't see them which blows my mind because they saw him and they saw him well enough to know who he was and he didn't look up and see who they were he would have immediately known who they were well i mean they were shooting at you so i don't blame i yeah i wouldn't i mean how would you act in a situation like that exactly i do exactly what david did evan (laughs) damn you Get my Chevy and put the pedal to the metal. Yeah, man. yeah. Hopefully that banging song is still on. Some ridiculous song was on. It was like, double trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so they decide to go around the reservation and talk to everybody to see if he could recognize anyone's voice as the person who shouted out his name. But they had no luck there. We'll just walk around and talk to everybody on the reservation, including those bullies who were <laughs> making fun of you earlier. And uh, they kind of have a weird altercation with them. And you're like, man, are these bullies part of the bad guy's crew? We, we don't know. Yeah, are they involved? Yeah. Pretty much Walker's like, okay, well, you didn't recognize anybody. So I'm going to leave you here at, it looks like the... Uh, the general store. Yeah. No, it's clearly labeled as the reservation store. Okay. I'm, it, <laughs> that's <laughs> what it's called. Yeah. And, and Uncle Ray's just chilling in there, so... He leaves David with him and says, hey, Uncle Ray, can you watch David for me? And Uncle Ray does a good job at this. But And then Walker, where is he head? I guess he's going back because they're trying to get a warrant to open up the safety deposit box. They figured out what bank it was for. So he's rushing back to check out the box. 
But um, he's interrupted because as soon as he leaves, the two guys who've been creeping around in the car, we learn that they're FBI agents and they immediately arrest David. And Uncle Ray doesn't say a word, which I think is probably the most accurate part of this episode where like (laughs) Native Americans have been so downtrodden by any sort of white law enforcement that they know that it's just like... Don't try to fight it. Don't say. So he doesn't yeah. say anything. Pretty much, he's like, "Oh, well, I was supposed to watch you, but yeah, sure, take him away." <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. He watched him get taken away. But Uncle Ray was useful because he was able to describe these guys to Walker later. Well, not only that, he immediately calls Walker's sick car phone, proto cell phone. Yeah, and I think Walker technically, like when he hears what happens, does the reverse bat turn in his truck. Oh yeah. He just spins that sucker around and starts heading back towards the reservation, right? Mm-hmm. And while this is happening, David's in the backseat of the car with the two FBI agents who murdered Three Feathers. So they pull over, kind of it looks around the same area where Three Feathers was. Yeah. So they might have been doing the same thing with Three Feathers. And they said, all right, we're going to let you go. They also pull out like their guns, though. And David's like, you're just going to kill me. Yeah, We're going to hunt you for sport. But we're going to give you a good head start. David basically delays long enough for Walker to show up. But just as Walker's showing up, he runs into the woods and one guy takes a shot and actually hits David in the leg Mm -hmm. before Walker can see what's going on. So at this point, I wasn't even sure if they were real FBI agents either. Yeah, I mean, I was like, these guys could just be acting. But then Walker meets them and kind of, he doesn't really trust them either, but he doesn't seem to be very concerned with their legitimacy right he just just sees their badge flash and they're like okay all right these guys are legit maybe we can work within the system to free david walker goes with these two bad guy fbi agents into the woods and walker goes first i was like oh are they gonna try to kill walker but they obviously they don't they know not to mess with them walker he actually sees one of david's footprints and there's some blood And so he suspects foul play, and he doesn't really want to lead them to David. So he's like, well, guess we can't find him. But he has to leave David alone in the woods, and David is injured. Back at CD's bar, which is featured heavily in this episode. Yeah, he spent a lot of time (laughs) at CD's. Yeah, they sort of lay down a plan. Walker's all like, okay, well, Alex just got the warrant for this box. So, Trevette, why don't you go with Alex and you guys can see what's in this box that everyone wants to get at so much. Right. And I'm going to go back to the woods and search for David. And Trevette's all like, but it's like, you know, it's nighttime. Are you going to be all right? Walker's like, i got to give it a try. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, Alex and Trevette, they go to the uh, the bank and they get the safety deposit box. It's got the two keys and everything. They with great fanfare, you know, turn the two keys at the same time, take the box out, and the <laughs> bank teller's all like, well, there's a private room over here that you can look at the contents, and they're like, okay, we'll take it there. And the private room has a window that you can look into. <laughs> yeah. Well, this whole time, I'm like, okay, the FBI agents show up here. Right, the FBI right. agents show up here. The FBI they're agents already in show the room. up. Right, they're in... No, then I guess they're in the room. No, they're nowhere. (laughs) They start looking through this box and with no gloves on or anything, just start picking up photos and all kinds of other stuff. Um, And they see a photo which has the two agents, which neither one of them recognized because they'd never seen them before. Also a photo of an oil tycoon, um, which if there's one thing I've learned in watching these episodes is that Texas law enforcement they know exactly what every oil tycoon looks like. They can pick them out of a lineup like that. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, that's so-and-so. He's an oil tycoon. They're celebrities. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Anyways, they keep pouring through the contents of this box, which just looks really boring. So <laughs> people editing this episode know that it's boring, and so they immediately <laughs> cut to a zoom shot, zooming in on uh, Chuck Norris, shirtless, alone, He's in the sweat lodge with a fire going. He's got his eyes closed and he starts hallucinating stock footage of a bald eagle. <laughs> and there's a lot of sound, a lot of a lot of uh, hawk sounds and eagle footage and cuts from him to the eagle and then back to him and his eyes snap open and then 
it starts to zoom in on him, but they clearly can't get close enough on that shot. So it cuts to another shot that they must have gotten earlier on. Oh, from the side. They, yeah, yeah, of his eyeball. And it zooms into his eyeball incredibly close, like into the pupil, and then fades <laughs> over to a shot of a bald eagle zooming out from its head. So at this point, they have now established that Chuck Norris can see through the eyes of a bald eagle. <laughs> And so they have now established this link. Bluetooth is linked up. And uh, he can now see what the eagle sees. And he sees eagle vision of uh, David running through a grove of pine trees. Exactly. And he's like, oh, I know exactly where David is and the path that he went because I'm literally seeing it through the eyes of an eagle. Mm -hmm. And And this is what we watch Walker, Texas Ranger for right here. Yeah. And you might say, well, how does he possibly recognize that grove of pine trees it probably looks like a lot of them but uh that's the exact place where the uh, legend of running bear footage was shot so he probably just knows it from that <laughs> yeah that guy was a really good storyteller <laughs> visual storyteller <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man um <laughs> So now we know, like, okay, Walker's on the case here. And uh, meanwhile, back at CDs, Trevette and Alex have thrown, uh, you know, any attempts to keep the uh, evidence within that safety deposit box pristine. They've now exposed all of it to the elements of CDs Bar and Grill. Mm. They're pouring over the evidence and CDs kind of sitting next to them, wondering what the heck is going on. And Trevette and Alex have this exchange of, oh, no, they didn't, did they? They couldn't have. What? They did what? (laughs) And there's so much suspense. Yeah, we have Um, no idea what they're talking about. And they pull the taffy for a weird amount of time. CD shares our frustration, too. He's like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Tell me what you mean. Right. And it's like, certainly it can't be worse than murdering three feathers, but okay. (laughs) Fortunately, we don't have to wait too long. I mean, there was a commercial break there, so... um, (laughs) <laughs> you know, if we'd been watching this on TV, we really would have been dying in suspense. But yeah. we actually see Walker back on the reservation. He's packing up for a journey. And, you know, all he packs for a journey is basically a canteen, which uh, it's all he needs. It's probably full of piss and vinegar, too. <laughs> it could be. It could be full of pearl beer. We don't really know. <laughs> um, Trevette shows up in his sick Pontiac and he's like, oh, Walker, let me tell you what we found out these two fbi agents they're the worst of the bunch and they basically conspired with a local guy in the deeds office and this oil tycoon to basically redraw the property lines on the eastern border of the reservation so that it now included a uranium mine (laughs) (laughs) and uh, apparently three feathers found out and so they had him killed for it Now, this is like some really lazy and convoluted exposition at the end of the episode. Wasn't that a weird data dump? Yeah, I thought it was funny, though, because it's just like, we didn't know. We we have no idea what's going on. Okay, here's exactly what's happening. It's it's just like, lays it all out. Yeah. Here's the whole evil bad guy plan, fully exposed. (laughs) Exactly. Now here it is. (laughs) And now Walker can do his thing. I was surprised to hear them throwing out uh, uranium as something you could mine out of the ground in the States, but apparently a very small percentage of the world uranium resources are mined out of the United States. So that's interesting. The more you know. Yeah, Yeah, right? (laughs) As you said, it it was an exposition dump, but, uh, you know, that that is pretty low if if that were something that actually happened. Like, come on now. That's pretty horrible. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it, it kind of merited some real disbelief on their behalf. Um, But Walker, he's all like, yeah, okay, I'm just going to go find uh, David now. He drives out to that grove of pine trees, and what do you know? He looks up, boom, bald eagle. Boom. Yeah, yeah. Establishing network connection. Boom. Eagle vision. Engaged. And we see the same stock footage of the bald eagle against the blue sky. Hmm. Same footage the whole episode, right? It's just like oh, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't care, but it was literally the same thing, and you're just like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah, it's it's quite good stuff. <laughs> so yeah, it's about this time that they start getting like eagle vision of David running through the trees. That I was thinking like, oh, I I guess they must have had to have gotten this with 
a helicopter. Like, there's no other way that they could get, like, this overhead bird's eye view of someone running through the woods. And then I was like, oh, this is that episode with the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> so the helicopter sort of comes screaming over the trees, and we realize it's got the two FBI agents in it. One of them has a machine gun. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they can kind of see the same thing that Walker can through Eagle Vision. And pretty rapidly, they get a couple glimpses of David, so they know he's around there somewhere. Yeah. But uh, Walker's able to to catch up with David, and he's all like, shh, do you hear that? There's a helicopter. It's like, you, you would have heard that miles away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he hides David in some trees, and the helicopter tries to hunt them down and starts shooting wildly into the trees. But the two FBI agents, they're idiots. And they're like, oh, we stand a much better chance on foot against Walker. So let's guess, go yeah. try this Incorrect. out. Correct Against Walker in the woods in his element. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then even worse, they decide to split up. Oh. Yeah. Kiss you of death right way. there. I'll go this way. Right. And this next scene is probably one of my favorite Walker moments. Just classic. Kind of reminiscent of the dollar trick from Last Hope. Oh, I mean... Trevette learned this from Walker. Probably Walker telling stories of of this trick. So there's a bad guy with a gun walking along the edge of the woods, and he comes into a clearing. He sees Walker's hat, and it's next to a pile of leaves, and he reaches down to pick up the hat, and pow. (laughs) Walker kicks him in the face. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, he just kind of materializes out of this pile of leaves and immediately like grabs the guy by the arm and then does a judo kick to the face and the guy's out. Yeah, and knowing what was coming in this episode, I was looking at any other shot of the woods. There were no leaves anywhere. He brought him himself. <laughs> he, he brought his own. He brought him home. That's what he packed with him was a, a pile of leaves to do this like gotcha trap. B-Y-O-L, I think is what it is. Bring your own leaves. This guy, the guy who got taken out, he's played by Steve Boyum. This guy has been a stuntman for 72 different projects. But the most interesting thing I think about this guy's career is that he was an actor for like 20 years. His last role was as this agent in Walker, (laughs) Texas Ranger. Oh, wow. This was the role that made him stop acting and just doing stunts. Mm. So there you go getting kicked in the face by walker here in this gotcha trap as walker hidden leaves and baited him man that would be a great tipping point to change your career i think it's, it's so good but yeah apparently i, I watched this on tv <laughs> september 1st 2016 is when i posted this up so that's the last time i saw this episode it's so good this moment imagine walker setting all that stuff up and then laying there and then what if the guy didn't even come by and then he goes and finds David and then kills him. Meanwhile, Walker's just taking a nap under some leaves. It's That's broad it. daylight, too. And <laughs> how are you going to cover yourself up with leaves? You can't tell if you're covered totally, right? Here's the question. In that shot right there, do you think he's still under the leaves? Because he's definitely in, the, in them there. But yeah. in that first shot, is he under the leaves? It might have looked bad like to have someone under it. Like, obviously, there's someone there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, you're right. I think it might just be leaves. <laughs> Either way, the end result is, is stellar. Is magnifique. Yeah. 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 It's like a cobra strike. <laughs> <laughs> this moment is one of my favorite Walker sneak attacks. So good. What do we nickname this? It's not the Johnny Appleseed. Is this <laughs> yeah, the, the, <laughs> the, the Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, All yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty ridiculous. So he takes out one of the agents and the last agent's the real bad guy. And he actually is able to find David. He basically gets this look on his face like he's about to shoot David. But Walker jumps out and takes this dude out with a couple of roundhouse kicks. And he's he's gone, so like mm, not yeah. even close. Yeah. Or at least you'd like to think. Mm. But Walker's helping out David. And this guy pulls another gun out of his boot. But Walker's ready and just blasts the guy. Yeah, and you don't see Walker just shoot people in later seasons, so you can tell this is earlier. But it kind of was like he was a quicker draw. Oh, yeah. It's pretty sick. Mm. Sick, but not surprising. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, and mm-hmm. he had no other choice, because they would have been gonzo if he didn't pull that. So. Yeah, but he did just kill a federal agent. <laughs> Texas yeah, Ranger. Yeah, imagine how much paperwork there would be with that. Oof, be brutal. Talk about Rip Van Winkle. 
Yeah, just hide under some <laughs> leaves. It'll go away. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, yep, Walker saved the day. He saved David, and they know what happened because we got that exposition dump, so they don't even really need to get into anything after that. Again, we close out in CD's Bar and Grill, so it's like four or five scenes in CD's this episode. Pretty good. Mm-hmm. Trevet, he's just checking out. He's about to leave. But he's like, man, I just can't believe that there were these agents. They were federal agents. I can't believe this happened. And, you know, Walker gives the classic excuse when there's any sort of law enforcement that goes awry. He says, you know, it's just, it's always going to be a couple bad apples. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and no one ever bothers to finish that, which is a few bad apples spoil the bunch. All right. We don't care yeah. about spoiling the bunch. We're just concerned about the bad apples. Yeah, he, yeah, he's pruning. Walker can prune law enforcement. With his handgun, maybe. <laughs> mm, he did. But this sets yeah. us up for kind of a comical way to end the episode. Alex and Walker sitting in a booth. And Alex is kind of grilling Walker. Walker, what visions did you have while you were in the sweat lodge? What were some of your visions? Tell me, Walker. What is he just like, oh, no, I shouldn't really talk about it. Yeah. Oh, oh, come on. Come on, Walker. Tell me. And he's like, well, it was me and you. What were we doing? (laughs) (laughs) It was just us. I really shouldn't talk about this. (laughs) And he has this cheesy grin, and it really stretched this one out. (laughs) Danced around what they could be doing together. Mm. Finally, Alex pulls it out of him, and Walker says, Oh, we were just fishing. <laughs> Freeze frame. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty it, torturous. It was, it was so good. <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, there was some chemistry there between uh, Sherry J. Wilson and Walker at that point. I honestly thought that was a good scene. It was a good way to dance around a topic that people are thinking about but the show can't tackle on network tv they hold hands too which is more than could be said for later seasons (laughs) right it was a fun way to close it out and it was good well that about sums up this episode we'd love to give a shout out to our friend and collaborator adam lauritsen who has been drawing the amazing walker strations on our social media be sure to check out his other art on instagram at at imagination run amok when we come back it'll be time for us to each rate The Legend of Running Bear on a scale of 0 to 10 boots to the face, resulting in our patented (laughs) Roundhouse Roulette episode ranking, the complete results of which are available on our website, roundhouseroulette.com. Don't go away. What's that you say, you fine feathered one? Tweet, 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 tweet. Adam accidentally left his wallet at Whataburger last night? Can you show me where it is? Through your eagles out of mine. Oh, that's just around the block. I'll swing by there now. Thank you, great wise eagle. He'll be very happy to use your telekinesis for such a worthy cause, but likely embarrassed it highlighted his fast food addiction. Oh, hey there, listener. Let's hop in the old gray pickup to see if we can't find Adam's wallet. While I've got you captive, we here at Roundhouse Roulette have pledged to deliver the light of Walker, Texas Ranger, to the world. If you'd like to lend us a hand in that mission, please share the pod with a friend. Or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Likewise, if you'd like to dress to impress, we've recently added some fresh new merch at roundhouseroulette.com or hit up our Patreon page. Most importantly, though, thank you for listening and making our journey worthwhile. Oh, look, there it is. Can you grab it for me? Ah, thanks. Hold it right there. We've got you surrounded. Bob? You're the Whataburger Bandit? What, me? Your partner? I know this is going to sound crazy, but an eagle told me to drive to Whataburger, too. Save it for the station, buddy. How quickly the good go bad. Take them away, boys. I can't wait to get off this case and shed this burger body. Podcast listener, you best get back to the show. Hopefully the great wise eagle can show the way out of this unfortunate misunderstanding. Although, eagles can be wily and tricksters at heart. Oh, great eagle, you got me this time. (laughs) Welcome back uh, from that uh, window into our insanity. 
What did you guys think about this episode? I thought this episode was kind of refreshing because it was an earlier one, and we've been kind of into the mid to late walkers. As with the earlier ones, they're a little slower. There's a little more space, not as much excitement and bombast (laughs) as some of the later episodes. Or bomb blasts. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) But what this one comes down to, look, Walker communicated with an eagle, and there was eagle vision. Okay? Walker hid in a pile of leaves and baited a bad guy and kicked him in the face. That's it. I mean, that's great. Yeah. But we had to wait a long time for that to happen. That said, definitely worth a watch. I'm going to give this one a six. Yeah, I agree with you on the uh, eagle vision and the mysticism. That really helped out. Uh, And then the leaves thing was great. But we could have used a little bit more of that. (laughs) Exactly. uh, There are a lot of things in this episode where I was kind of like, this is, like I've mentioned, the bird sounds being closer to real. Other things that were like a little bit better done, I think, if that makes any sense. I don't know. It's mm-hmm. so it was too tasteful. Is that what you're saying? Right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and, and I think in that, in, in this case, that kind of pulls it down because mm. uh, that ridiculousness is kind of what I'm looking for. Um, yeah. But I think it all just kind of evened out for me, and I just went middle of the road on this one. I just gave it a five. Yeah, I mean, I. Definitely love these earlier seasons. I think the character chemistry, as we talked about, is is way better. You know, it's almost believable. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I think earlier in these episodes, they kind of have the unbelievable as well, which is like the fact that Walker is an active member in his tribe, which seems completely and totally unbelievable (laughs) well if only judged by the way they treat david then yes yeah exactly (laughs) like and like david as a character is dating a woman who still lives on the reservation and he's planning on coming back and practicing medicine at the reservation whereas walker lives off the reservation comes back occasionally to trounce people in horse races or (laughs) or to bust criminals and that's about it um when an oil tycoon or another tycoon comes in but uh yeah i mean eagle vision and leaf grab i would say this episode if it were a highlight reel would be a 10 (laughs) but uh i think as an episode it definitely drags on a bit and is lacking some of that action although that car chase was pretty spot on mm. yeah mm. that's true mm. you know i that don't know Astro I, van was pretty good the too. ending though didn't yeah. end in an explosion it ended in traffic and the last thing people want to see in, in a action tv show is a traffic jam come on now yeah this was yeah. realistic yep, yep. <laughs> you're right it was too realistic <laughs> it was real good they're like man I, we forgot to shut down traffic for our shooting <laughs> let's just yeah. roll with it yeah. um <laughs> yeah, so I want to give this one a really great rating because of the ridiculous tropes that are in it, but I can't really do that. I got to come down on like a, uh, I guess, a seven on this. Mm, wow, well, okay. Only because of Eagle Vision and... <laughs> you are a birder, so I get absolutely, it. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Birder first, yeah. Yeah, also the leaf... Ambush is the finest showing of Walker's guile in the woods. (laughs) (laughs) And also, I think the fact that, like, they didn't put a lot of fanfare into the fighting itself, but the fighting was still, like, he was still doing roundhouse kicks, but they weren't, like, they're just like, oh, yeah, you know, he just knows karate. Mm, Yeah, but they could have, like, replayed it so we could have seen it multiple times. If there's only going to be one (laughs) fight, we might as well just replay the kick. Right. Right. Yeah. They, Maybe they, they hadn't developed that technique yet. The editing room. <laughs> right. But again, you know, they were learning on this. That gives this episode a roundhouse rating of six boots to the face. Ah! Well, I think we can all agree that we need to spend more time bird watching. But please let us know what you think on social media or by emailing us at roundhouseroulette at gmail.com. When we come back, we'll spin that roundhouse roulette wheel and select next week's episode. We're back. You guys ready to spin that wheel? Well, you know it. Hey, you're up. Ooh. Oh, I think this is a classic. 
Big assignment this week, guys. Oh, yeah. man. This one is pretty good. It's a twofer. We got a part one and part two. This is season three, episode seven and eight, The Road to Black Bayou. While on a fishing vacation together, C.D., Trevette, and Walker reel in more than they bargain for when they accidentally uncover an elusive and illegal drug operation. Nice. Would there be a legal drug operation down there, too, or? Could be, like Pfizer, you know. They're just yeah, yeah. Pills. It could be a vaccination kind of thing, yeah. Um, I think this one stars the Big Lebowski, if I remember correctly. Nice. Well, we hope to join us next week when we share our reactions to Season 3, Episode 7, The Road to Black Bayou, Part 1. Share your opinions with us on Facebook and on Instagram at, at Roundhouse Roulette and on Twitter at, at Roundhouse Pod and rate and review us on Apple Podcasts wherever you get your fine podcasts. Thanks for listening and until next week, may, may the, the eyes, eyes of the Ranger, the Ranger be, be upon, upon you. When you're in Texas, look behind you. Oh, cause that's where the Ranger's gonna be. Here's some tuna gimpy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Special treat. Mm.